guys. <laughs> if you haven't been watching Nicole's channel, she's been talking and building a lot of 1920s clothing and she's done a whole capsule wardrobe because she and I are going on a trip. I am also building a capsule wardrobe, but it's not gonna be 1920s. It's gonna be clothing from 1916 to 1919. I don't have a wardrobe. <laughs> I, I just don't. So I need to build one. And when I made this decision to do this, this was like almost a year ago and I thought I would have time, but between moving and finding a house, buying the house, and then renovating the sewing space to actually make it functional and usable, I am running short on time. Kenna, who I, you know, I, she's been on the channel, I think maybe one or two times. She works as my research assistant and like script editor. I was talking to her about this thing and she was like, do you want help? And I was like, let me buy you a plane ticket. <laughs> so anyways, Kenna and I, for this video, we're gonna be endeavoring to build in, not an entire wardrobe in a week because that's just not possible, but definitely several pieces within a week. This is gonna include a suit, um, possibly two suits if we have time, and then two day outfits. So that's what we're working on this week. Let's, let's get to work. This humidity, I forgot, but my skin looks great though. But that's not the point. The point is I'm here today to tell you about the sponsor of this week's video, Native Deodorant, and specifically about Native Deodorant's latest change in their plastic-free packaging, but also that they have some super festive summer scents that kind of smell like you're, you know, having rosé all day with the girlies at brunch, sort of hauling away in a basement cave sewing. Native recently updated their plastic-free packaging, so not only do you actually get 100% plastic-free packaging, but it's also in that more classic deodorant shape that's easier to apply, has a little bit better coverage. It just, it goes on a lot easier. It's, a, it's really easy to use. For every single plastic-free version that you use, you're actually saving 37 grams of single-use plastic from being used in the environment, which is awesome. Plus, Native is actually dedicated to sourcing the paper for their plastic-free deodorants from sustainable uh, paper harvesting sources. So, you know, better for the trees. We like our trees here. But they also are involved in the 1% back for the planet. And the packaging's already made from 90% post-consumer recycled paper products. So, it's recycled, it's reused, we're reducing waste. It's just like we learned in the 90s, kids. Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? The scents are amazing and they last a really long time, like up to 72 hours. I know a bunch of people who use Native, including myself, and like we all like it, we all enjoy using it. Also, if you're not in the market just for deodorants, they have fantastic body washes that are dye-free, they smell amazing. Oh, I love their, their body washes. I have them in every bathroom in the house. Normally three plastic free deodorants are $39, but with my code, you'll get them for 33% off. And that means you'll get three deodorants for only $26. Plus you can get 20% off body washes and toothpaste too, if you're into that sort of thing. So go ahead and follow the link in my description if you feel like jumping on this native deodorant, plastic free deodorant party train. I am your conductor and your host for the journey. Plus it smells really good. It smell like bring me two pina coladas, you know, one for each hand. We'll set sail with Captain Morgan, but we'll never leave dry land. These troubles, I forgot them. I buried them in the sand. Garth Brooks. Thanks again to Native for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's let's get back to the video. Cut out the suit pattern in the herringbone. And then collars and cuffs will be in the black in a black velveteen. There might be black velveteen in my mailbox right now. I might need to go get. Fingers crossed. And then I'll cut out the skirt for this in the or we'll cut out someone will cut some. I don't know. One of us will do something. We're smart, we're smart, we're smart, we're smart. We're intelligent, we're smart. We can do this. Oh, look at that cut to lining if desired. So why don't you mention the lining on the instructions? So it's almost the end of day one. So we've cut everything out, the suit and the hound's tooth, and then I cut out the skirt and the red wool crepe. And we've been working, and we also went on an adventure to an uh, antique store, which was fun. Um, I might have bought 40s porn. I don't know, we'll find out. The suit is in progress. The skirt is almost done. 
It just needs to hang so we can get the hem, but the belt's in place. So we got some hound's tooth and some cotton velveteen happening here. It's looking really good. The suit jacket is literally a tent. It has a belt. It gathers it in. I might, my vanity might ask for a little bit more tailoring. Kenna is plugging away in the brand new sewing room with brand new lighting. My brand new lighting and my old baby Janome that she seems to be quite content on. Are we ready to try Stufan? Oh my god, I look so official. Excuse me, Miss Working Girl. Gonna go work as a typist and then drink a lot of gin at night. Mm -hmm. I definitely want it shorter. Because that is not <laughs> that is not a cute length. So how much um how much shorter do you want it? Uh do we wanna I have a thing. Oh, you have a marker? I have a thing. I got it at the antique fair. Hold on, it's so cool. <laughs> Look how cute it is. Oh my god, it hasn't been hemmed yet. Mm. Is it clamps? but then you can slide a pin straight through. Wow. And then you can just, oh my goodness. Okay, let's test this. That worked. Oh my God, that's so cool. That's so baller. Wow. Guys, this is a 20 millimeter lens. So the proportions of my body right now probably look like something out of Pixar. Don't stress. You're, you're not acting enough like a cat for Kenna right now, Griffin. Yeah. You're acting a little bit more like a dog. Too dog-like and I'm so uncomfortable with it. <laughs> so I thought we were friends, sir. Okay, so we just finished the fitting for um, the suit. The skirt is great. The jacket is gonna have a lot of decorative pleating in it. It's, really... it's very funny seeing where the petticoat ends and then <laughs> It looks like a bad Halloween costume. Like a bad Renaissance fair dress. <laughs> like the, what's it called? The baguette dress, the 1880s recalls or whatever, with the croissants at the sides. Would you want to say hi to everybody on the internet? Oh, that's scary. Do you want to use your dew claws and sew something? Oh my god, tongue at my elbow. <laughs> Thank you, Griff. Really supportive. Also, if anyone's curious, Kenna does actually wear a corset every day. Just gonna say this, that if you do the Wearing History 1916 suit pattern, you will probably want to cut a size or two smaller in the jacket than the size that you're supposed to be because it's very, very full. The sleeves are very, very like long and loose. But we had to take a lot in so that way it actually looked like it fit me, but only on the jacket. The skirt, true to size, great. But this is my outfit, including the Kirkland slippers. Got my Bernie Sanders sweater. This is the Willow Petticoat from Bella May. She does has like a whole video about it and like the patterns on Etsy. It's very good. And now as all construction projects go, one person's working. <laughs> else is around. I have nothing to do with this project, so well, the... you should be working anyway. Yeah. I guess so. uh, hmm. And Abby finished her skirt before me, which is why she's not. It's not done. Her. I don't have a hand done. Oh well, then I just lied, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> now you're gonna have to do your own YouTube apology video. Start your own channel. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Instead of making a second dress, we're gonna make the second suit. We wanna use this uh, circa 1918, I think, jacket pattern for the shape. It's a beautiful shape. So we're thinking pattern it, mock it up, and just make the minute adjustments that need to be made. <laughs> I would stitch from the wrist and then work it up. And then cut it out in the dark green casimir. Might need to lengthen it a little bit. I mean, you must have an inch deep hem in there. I know, but it's 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 really short. I have excellent range of motion. Look at, look at, this is what you're supposed to be able to do in a suit, guys. <laughs> Collar looks good. All right, dude, I think we just need to lengthen it. Okay, back up. Fix the booty, lady. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Just stitching buttons, making buttons. Mm -hmm. Is it even 19 teens if there's no buttons? It's actually illegal to wear 19 teens clothing without at least 
half your body weight in buttons. Uh, the amount of buttons that you had on your dress indicated your wealth. Ooh, that's a good one. Today is the last full day of this week of sewing. Kenna leaves tomorrow afternoon. So we have like half a day of work uh, available to us tomorrow. I'm a morning person, she's a night person. So I get like two to three hours worth of work done in the morning. And then she works, she ends up sews, sewing like a couple hours at night, like after I go to bed. So we each basically get about 12 hours in every day. Um, so we, that's one of the reasons why we've been able to like really power through. So the jacket is behind me. So all the midi braids on, we got that on and I even like messed up the patterning of the midi braids. So kind of fixed that when I went to bed last night. So we are, what I'm doing today is just attaching the skirts and hopefully I'm gonna get all that attached. And I need to cut the interfacing out of the bodice pieces. I ended up interfacing, or flatlining, I should say, the Casimir. This Casimir is from Berlin Trowbridge. It's stunning. I love their Casimir. Um, I ended up interfacing it with muslin, just plain cotton muslin, um, because this cashmere has a beautiful drape to it, but I was worried it wasn't gonna be stiff enough and have enough body for this coat, this jacket, because the original twill of the 1916, it has that nice coarser feel to it that old wool has. Um, just different breeds of sheep, different processes um, in carding and weaving the wools. Um, so I decided to go ahead and, and flatline it with just muslin just to give it a little bit of extra body So it can really hold those pleats and it can really hold those crisp lines nicely And I'm glad I did so far. I haven't regretted it yet So like see how this gets like bunched up and then like this doesn't so that's what the muslin does We're both avoiding hemming the uh, red wool crepe skirt because it's <laughs> Difficult, but it, it, it's done. I can hem it. It's fine. I just kind of want to hem it like upstairs on the couch Cute though. Oh, there's a pin in there still. Oh my god. Oh my god, your back details, stunning. Overall, I am actually surprised and unsurprised by the outcome of um, of this week. You know, I in my all my years working at Colonial Williamsburg and doing like gowns in a day and stuff like that, like I've always I've learned very, very quickly that you set your goal, but no matter what you think that goal is. Honestly, you're never gonna reach it exactly the way you envision it. Um, simply because there's just too many variables in sewing. So obviously that suit jacket, that pattern that we used um, was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And so we had to do a lot of backtracking to fit. Look, I, I didn't do anything, Kenna did all of it, to, to make it fit and make it work. It's still not perfect. The arm size, I, they're completely in the wrong location, but you know, it's wearable. and. That jacket and that skirt are 100% technically finished. I think the trick with tailoring, especially historic tailoring, is finding that delicate hand of like taking the time to do that little bit of extra work to make sure that things lay properly, but not allowing yourself to over tailor. And like this jacket got me, I over tailored. I didn't even use horsehair. This is tarlatan. It's stiff tarlatan, but it's tarlatan. And when I had this in the lapels, of the shawl collar, it did a hard angle around my chest. It didn't curve over my chest. And, I was, and then I felt what mine felt like next to the original. I was like, this is too much, it's not right. So, you know, it's finding that balance. But I think the thing with tailoring too that people get intimidated by is that it's not necessarily hard. Like the steps are not hard, you just have a lot of them. And you have to sit in that space of you have to put in the tailor's tape you have to put in the interfacing you have to press with a clapper you have to 
be precise where like dressmaking especially historic dressmaking has always had this bit more of a slapdash like devil may care make it work tim gunn kind of vibe to it and when you look at originals like that's what you see like the tailored stuff in my collection it has those extra steps where like you know i have formal gowns that are just like how is this even held together um you know they still take care and fitting and stuff but it's it's just it feels like it's just a different mental vibe, I guess what I'm saying. And I think for modern makers who are not traditionally trained in any capacity, I could see how tailoring can be overwhelming, but honestly, I find it a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, it's different, but the outcome is nice and, and that precision is actually really satisfying when you take the steps to do it. That's it. Good. So with that in mind, I'll be taking applications for Photo Friend here in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you'd like to be my photo friend. The face he's making at me right now. Mm. Well, with that, friends, uh, if you enjoyed this video go, video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I upload every other Sunday. And uh, with that, don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all back here next time with another video. Bye. Hello.